Keith was seated at the end of the table, just touching to the stems of the flowers he had brought. They were arranged now in a vase in the table center. Natalie was at the refrigerator, pouring herself a drink. She said, do you want some grape juice? Oh, no thanks. Keith wrapped his fingers against the side of his pant leg. His one knee bounced. He calmed it when she turned. And he looked at her, smiling but with his brow furrowed. Natalie sat. Keith straightened. The silence kept for a long while, with Natalie taking only small swallows from her glass. Then Keith said, Have you thought about what I asked you? And Natalie said, Keith, her hand moving from her glass to raise a gesture of let's not. Keith, let's not. He paused, then said, I love you, and said again, I love you and whispered with tick-tock articulation, Natalie, I love you. She stood. I shouldn't have told you that. He softened his eyes to her while she took a pace, another, another, took them back, stopped, and he watched her, stopped. Told me what, Natalie? That, she paused that. My name. He stood from his chair. It sounded trashing as its legs dragged along the wood floor. What do you mean? She made no movement. Let him come to her, around her. What do you mean, Natalie? Keith, she said. Then quieter, Keith, rubbing her forehead against his shirt. Keith, 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 long pauses between each Keith. He traced the turn of each of her shoulder blades and hooked his hands just at the base of her back. She moved to look up at him. I love you, and I love you too, Natalie. But this is, it is, it's incorrect. Incorrect. I don't, she broke from him sat to her drink, reached to it clumsy, unlooking, upsetting the liquid to the table. He tore a paper towel from a roll and cleaned the spot. Natalie had drooped, sinking back in the chair. She said, I'm married. He let his hand go from the paper towel. Married? Yes. I should have, but she did not continue what she should have. He took her hand, putting it to his own face. I don't know what to say. I'm sorry, I shouldn't... I didn't know. Shouldn't have done any of this. Keith, I didn't know that. Keith, Natalie, I didn't know that. I didn't... Don't... She was a moment silent. She felt him let go of her hand. I shouldn't have told you my name. Keith moved closer to her. He caught the scent of her breath while he spoke. I don't understand what you mean when you say that to me, Natalie. She turned her eyes down, head down, eyes away, head away, some hair loosened and covered her cheek. He said, what does it mean that you shouldn't have told me your name? She was silent, then said, my husband, then went silent again then said, my husband. I love him. He nodded. He clasped her hand and let his head come to hers. I understand. Of course I understand. I'll leave, Natalie, and I don't... I'll leave. He motioned to stand. She whispered, no. He stayed, half standing, trying to meet her eyes. She whispered, I don't want you to go. I'll stay then, he said. She tightened her touch to his hands. I won't go anywhere then, he said, and then said, I love you. She said, I know that you do. Then, Keith, I know you do. Then released his hand, inched her seat back. They both were silent again. After a moment, she said, I'm going to tell you something now, Keith. He did not move. He did not respond. 
she continued, I'm just going to explain this thing to you. I'm going to tell you this. He did not move. He did not respond. She said, I'll tell you. She sighed, almost a groan. I'll tell you. My husband and I play a game. We, it's what we do. Our life. How we live our lives. Our life. She paused. We, after we met, and after we had fallen in love, and after we were married, and that all happened very quickly, we started this game. And what it is, she coughed, what it is. Every month of the year, we live as different people, but as the same people in each particular month every year. Keith blinked. I'm... Natalie, I'm not certain I... She motioned softly at him with one finger, her eyes wincing and looking off somewhere to a light fixture. What I mean is, in September, I'm Clara, for example. I'm someone. But in March, I'm Nancy. Not just in name. Not just I call myself it, but in everything. I am it. An entirely different person. I live as an entirely different person. But each person has only that month, and then they're gone until the next year in that month. She paused and pinched at her nose. It's difficult to explain. Keith leaned in towards her. No, I think... But he stopped without saying what. She paused to wait out his and then said, When I'm Clara, for example, I don't think about anything that happened to me when I was a Jill. I live as though I don't have those memory, that history, for the month, the months, I'm Clara or Suzanne, someone, whoever. I'm not allowed. I don't know whatever it is that Clara knows. About herself, that is. Right now, I don't know what I did last month because I don't have last month. I only have this month, last year, and whatever I want to say happened between. She paused. Only, of course, I do know what I did last month. Every month. Everything I know is everyone I am. But only because... Because I'm not doing it correctly. Only because I'm... She paused. I'm not... She paused. Keith touched her leg. Natalie, I think I see what... He paused. You play a game? You, your husband. Yes. You live together as... You pretend to be different people, like a game. Yes? No. No. She swallowed purposefully several times. No. We don't live together when we do this. We might end up together, of course. That's entirely possible. Wind up knowing each other, bumping into each other. Who I am in March could meet with who he is in March. And do. They do. They have. They can do whatever they want. We can do whatever we want. But not as us. I... I see. I don't think we are only us. Only together and us. Only in October. Natalie, so... Her breathing came sharper. So I... I can't be saying this to you. I shouldn't even know it. I shouldn't even still know you. You see? Keith touched her to steady her from shuddering. She said, I'm betraying him. No, Natalie, listen. I'm betraying him. Everything will end now. No. Natalie, do you hear yourself? Do you see me here? She was gasping and touching her throat, rubbing her palms like she were smoothing the skin down. Keith took her to his body. She said, I love you, though, Keith. Keith, I do love you. I know that. I love you. Natalie, I know that. I love you. And she repeated the phrase like burbling over and over, shaking in his arms. He waited until after she had quieted to tell her again, I love you too, Natalie. Her eyes stung and she jerked her face back to see his. No, you can't. I love him. And it's, 
in three days, three days from now, I... She trembled again. He held her. He whispered his mouth to the skin of her neck. Natalie, please listen to me. She said, three days from now, listen to me. I won't be me. I... I won't know you. Of course you will. I already shouldn't. I shouldn't be me. I shouldn't know you. God damn it. You obviously do. You obviously are. You obviously will, right? And aren't I right here? She calmed all of a sudden, pushed back her hair, set her eyes stern at him, tapping her face back, chin toward her chest. Yes, I know I will. Yes, I know that, she paused, but I won't let myself know that, and I already shouldn't have been here, shouldn't be me here still, and I never should have told you, Natalie. I don't understand why in hell you're speaking to me this way, Natalie. For Christ's sake, I love my husband. I shouldn't have said these things to you. It doesn't matter that but she stopped before saying what it didn't matter that. He waited for her to go on, and when she did not, he said, doesn't matter that what? I won't be who I am now, soon. I will love you, but I won't let myself know that I do. That's ridiculous. She went silent. He said, listen to what you're saying to me. She kept silent. He said, you love me now, yes? She nodded. He said, so in a day, in three days, in four days, love me still. Stay with me. Whatever you mean about your husband, we'll talk about. Stay with me. She continued nodding more distinctly, but said, I can't. He shut his eyes. He had begun to perspire. You can. Natalie, you certainly can. Do you... He paused, seemed almost to laugh. You aren't insane. Who in hell is your husband? How does he care for you? How does he claim to be worth your loving him this way? Natalie, I don't believe a word of... Listen to me, Keith. I only love you who I am now because I met you when I... I met you when i am who i am now she tensed the joints at her shoulders popping and now i've betrayed him i've killed him i'm killing him saying this saying natalie i never should have said natalie you haven't done a thing he laughed kept laughing not manic as if it a punchline to some mild joke natalie honestly Honestly, she was staring at him. You mean to say that if you see me in two months, you won't love me? She stared. But next December, you will. Next December, Natalie will love me, but not until. She looked down. I always will. Her voice had broken. So just think what you're saying. I will, though, just as with my husband. But here she stopped talking and would not meet Keith's eyes. He stared at her forehead for several minutes, his eyes moving with calculations. Finally, he straightened and said, Now, I don't believe you. He paused. Now, what are you even saying to me, Natalie? Do you love me? Do you love me, yes or no? She meekly said yes, and her head limply turned to one side. Yes? Then what are you saying this nonsense to me for? I don't believe a word of it, Natalie, and I don't know why you think I would, why anyone would. Now listen to me. She stayed silent, listening. He repeated, now listen to me. Will you? She closed her eyes, nodded. I don't, I do not, and will not believe what you're saying right now. Have you listened to yourself? Why are you saying these things? Are you afraid of something? Are you afraid of your husband? No, because, because, 
he gestured out to either side arbitrarily, because this is nonsense. Her features tightened, and she whispered, No. He nodded forcefully, standing to his full height. Yes, oh yes, Natalie, no. He waved his hand in front of her once. No, you're not married. Or, he waved his hand again, a breeze stirring to the skin of her downturned face. Or, if you are, yes, fine. He paused. Yes, fine. If you are, then you are. But do you expect me to, why do you tell me this, honestly expect me to believe about some nonsensical, about some game? I'm not a fool, Natalie. I'm not a child. She had started to cry, weeping with no sound. Why do you play this game? The table shook to him, slapping his hand to it, the vase nearly upturned. Why? If, A, Natalie, you had any feelings, why? She stopped breathing. He paused to swallow. What of the things you've said to me? She opened and closed her mouth, her lips suctioning, her jaw clicking each time. Were they a game? Were they part of some game with your husband? You say, I love you. Are you playing a role? Were you, when you told me that, playing for him? She caressed the edge of the table. She swallowed between each word. No. I love you. Keith held her to his gaze, but stood and moved down to the end of the room. You love me? Yes. He nodded, sharp. And next month you'll not be, he waved, his arm hitting the wall, you. Is that it? Yes. And so you'll... He stopped, ran his hands over his face, rubbing at one eye for nearly a minute. Natalie, I ask you, will you love me then? She went, silent, and stayed. Except for some slight swaying at indistinct moments, she was immobile. He forced himself to look at her. There, he said. Okay, I understand. It's a game. Are you playing your part well? No. No? It's a game? He paused. You're not playing well. It's a game, you mean you aren't winning? She took in a sudden breath which grated her throat, slipped from her chair to the floor, scurried to the wall, and propped herself up in its corner. Keith went to his knees to her. She had lacerated her elbow in the fall. He touched her foot at the end of where her one leg was outstretched. She muttered, I love you. He moved his hand a bit forward and caressed her ankle. I love you too, stood and went for a towel, then knelt to her and pressed it to her elbow. Natalie, I love you too. Listen to me. She tried to say I love you but couldn't. Rolled her eyes as far back as she could while he sat, leaned to her on the floor beside her, and she put her head to him and wept until he said, Natalie. And she wept, and he said, Natalie, I want you to listen to me now. And looked off to the door in the corner of another room and said, Natalie, just listen. But said nothing for her to listen to. And she wept. <laughs>